You're listening to the Stock Market Options Trading Podcast, a podcast helping retail traders like yourself get better results. If you enjoy listening to cutting edge options research and trading strategies that help you make consistent gains in the stock market, be sure to subscribe now so you don't miss an episode. Now, here's your host, Jay Eric O'Rourke. Welcome back to the Stock Market Options Trading Podcast. My name is Eric, and I've got a really cool case study for you guys today. Uh, we're going to be looking at a long-only strategy trading the S&P 500, and we're going to talk about the strategy here in a minute. But basically what I did was I took, you know, for the past five years, I took all the entry and exit signals for this strategy. And on one side, I back tested buying an at the money call debit spread. So this is a long only strategy and we're looking to get long. And as you guys know, there's different ways to get long. So one way we're getting long for this study is buying a call debit spread. It's also known as a bull call spread. And then I took the same entry and exit signals uh, that were applied to the S&P 500. And instead of buying the call spread, I bought SSO, which is a two times leverage ETF of the S&P 500. So the short way to think about that is if the SPY moves up 1%, SSO would move up almost 2%. So it's it's, it's always, you know, there's always a little bit of a give there, but it's a two times uh, leverage ETF of the S&P 500. So two ways we're going to be getting long. So the idea here is to compare the two strategies as it relates to the amount of capital you would need to trade the strategy and also just the profits and kind of talk a little bit about a, the losses. So I, I really want you to kind of understand how it feels to trade uh, one of these strategies. And the underlying theme here is trading with leverage, right? So you've probably read plenty of option and stock books and with the base idea that, you know, options give you leverage so that you can use less money to get similar exposure to buying a particular stock or ETF or something. In general, like if you buy a call option with a Delta 50, you're getting exposure of a similar uh, you're getting a similar risk exposure of buying 50 shares of that particular stock. So a lot of times this is a lot cheaper. Um, and that's the general idea is, you know, you can use options for leverage, but there's also leveraged ETFs uh, such as SSO. And there's there's other ones for various ETFs. So that's what we wanted to kind of compare is comparing two different leveraged methods of getting long and as opposed to just, you know, comparing buying a call option versus buying the stock, you guys probably read about that already. So we're going to be comparing a leveraged ETF where you're just buying the shares, no options, and, and uh, you know, using a, 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 call, a bull call spread to get long the S&P 500, which is leveraged in its own right. And you'll, you'll you know, this will make sense as we get into the numbers of the strategy. So before we get into the, the case study, though, you need to know that everything in this episode and on this podcast is for informational purposes only, and that I, Eric, am not a financial advisor of any kind. I don't hold any registrations. I'm just an independent guy who likes to do homework. Um, and also, in case you didn't know, trading options can be risky, and you should really do your own due diligence uh, when it comes to managing your own money. It's your money, your responsibility. I am just providing information that I've come across in my research and studies as sort of a convenience to you guys, but I would definitely recommend doing your own due diligence uh, before you apply money to any particular strategy. So, all right, let's get started. So the strategy we're using, before we get to the actual trades, we're using a study based on a quantitative trend following strategy called Pure Alpha. This is something that I developed or at least sort of put a lot of homework into. And in the last podcast episode, I explained the strategy a little bit when we talked about the crisis alpha trading UVXY. Um, I definitely recommend you go back and listen to that one if you haven't listened to it all, already. We're going to go to the basics here. So that's I think that's episode three called crisis alpha for black uh, swan events. So give it uh, give that one a listen when you get a chance. The general strategy is this, though. Um, we're looking at a long only strategy, no short trades for right now where we're looking at a weekly chart and a, and a uh, certain moving average. And if the moving average is sloping up, that gives you sort of a bullish signal or bullish sign that the stock's in 
you know, uh, an uptrending um, state. And we'll be looking at the daily chart for entries and exits. And the daily chart, the entries and exits are based on the slope of the moving average. When the slope of that same moving average slopes up, that would be an entry. And when the slope starts to turn down, that would be an exit. It's very smoothing. We're using a whole moving average. Go back and listen to that uh, episode when you get a chance. But I'm also going to put some links in the description of the podcast. I don't know if you're listening to this on YouTube or Spotify or Apple. I'm going to put a description, some links in the description. If you want to learn more about that strategy and get really get into the video training and all that, um, definitely check the description for those links. Uh, but it's pretty simple. It does a great job of getting you in and out of the market, and it really avoids large drawdowns, which is one benefit of the strategy. So what I did was I ran the strategy backtest on SSO. That's the, the two times bull ETF of the SPY. And again, basically, if the SPY is up 1% in the day, SSO is going to be up uh, you know, close to 2%. The opposite is true, too. If the SPY is down 2%, we've seen a lot of crazy down days recently, SSO would be down close to 4%. So it's twice the bull. And it's also twice the bear if it goes down, right? So you, it's, you're trading with leverage, right? So the period of time we're looking at for this study on SSO is from March, about March 2015 through mid-March or the end of March of 2020. So it's pretty recent. And just trading SSO with the Pure Alpha strategy uh, made about 96% in that in those five years, just taking buy signals to the long side. And when things get really ugly, you're not in because the weekly chart goes down. So as trading SSO itself made about 96% on the amount of capital you, you put in and out of that trade. So just kind of as a reference, uh, during this period, SPY was only up about 29% the past five years. And this is also kind of factoring in uh, the recent Corona crash. So, you know, we're already seeing that trading a leveraged product in a tactical manner. In this tape, in this case, it's a quantitative trend following strategy. You can't outperform the market just trading SSO, or at least in this five-year period, um, by a factor of three or so. So the leverage is working. Um, let's go ahead and keep tra uh, keep going and we'll talk about the strategy. During this five-year period, there was about 89 trades and the win rate was about 57%. Uh, the winning trades were about 11 days long and the losing trades were about four days long. So that's just a little kind of um, little information about, uh, you know, how that strategy worked, the duration and all that stuff. Again, there's only a 57% win rate, but, you know, as we know, win rate doesn't mean all that much. It's really how much you're making. And this strategy did pretty well with SSO on its own. Again, almost doubling your money over the past five years when the S&P is only up about a third, right? Or 30%. So let's talk about dollar amounts real quick. Just as a reference uh, for this study, I allocated $3,000 per trade for SSO. And that basically came out uh, to profits about $2,900. We're, and you know, we're choosing $3,000 of trade. It just has an arbitrary number, but it, it'll relate here in a minute when we talk about the debit spreads. But basically, had you allocated $3,000 per trade, trading the strategy, you would have netted just under $2,900. So again, it's about a 96, 97% gain on your money over the past five years, just trading SSO. And we're not including any commissions. There's no compounding of the trades. We're simply buying $3,000 worth of SSO, however many shares that is for the entry, and then we would sell it. And then the next trade, we would adjust our number of shares so that we're trading $3,000 per share. Okay, so let's talk about the debit spread for a minute. First, I wanna talk about why I chose SPX for the study. So I chose to use SPX for the debit spreads because mainly they are a European style options expiration. And what that means is there's no risk of early assignment. And that's gonna matter when we're trading debit spreads, call debit spreads, because ultimately you're gonna be buying a call option and then selling a call option. And when you have a sold call option that's potentially in the money near expiration, there is a risk of early assignment with American style options, but since most of the indexes are European PN style. This, this applies to SPX, RUT, NDX, e, uh, OEX, some of the other indexes. This kind of plays into why we want to trade indexes for this, or, or at least European style options, so they're not risk of the early assignment in case that call spread goes in the money, which is actually what you want. 
So for the SPX call debit spread, we're going to be trading at the money debit spread. And the way that I put this into the back test was I basically went back. I did these manually, by the way. Uh, I bought one call option that's in the money, uh, one one strike in the money. So for a call option to be in the money, the call option strike is slightly below price. And to reduce the cost of the option, I sold a one strike out of the money call option. So we're right at the money. We're looking at like Delta, you know, Delta 51, Delta 48 kind of spread there. And we're buying one option, call option, and selling a second call option to reduce the cost. And that was the setup for the debit spread. So I went back during the five years and I bought a debit spread. We, I'm using 14 days to expiration. And the reason why I'm using 14 days to expiration for this example is because the average long trade was 11 days. So remember, you know, real quick, the the strategy we're testing against, um, we're using a technical entry and a technical exit. So we're, there's no profit target. There's no stop loss. It's just when the market goes up, you're going to buy. And when it starts to turn back over, we're going to sell. So it's a technical entry and a technical exit. So I wanted to give our options enough time to cover what that average trade was. So since the average duration of, a, of the trade for winning trades was 11 days and the average loser was four days, I chose to do a 14-day uh, to expiration spread so that if the if it did go 11 days or 12 days, then you could see max gain on that uh, on that debit spread. And obviously, if it goes against you, you'll be out in four days and you can exit uh, the trade. So again, we're using the same entry and exit signal that we used on SSO. So there's still the same number of trades, the same durations. But instead of buying SSO, we're buying an at the money SPX debit spread with 14 days to expiration. And because the option that we're selling, the call option is just out of the money, if this trade uh, works out and the market continues to move up, both of those options are going to be in the money, which is what you want for a debit spread. For a debit spread to reach max profit, both strikes have to be in the money. And if you're in that last week of trading and you have a sold call option, you have that risk of early assignment. So this is why, again, just to kind of reiterate the point, this is why we're doing this on SPX and not SPY, for example. So real quick, um, here's where it kind of gets interesting. I'm just going to ask you, I know you're not going to answer because you're, you're on a podcast, but um, how much do you think one of these debit spreads cost? So I was looking through all the entries <clears throat> and on average, these SPX debit spreads, you know, just single strike right at the money is around $3 a spread or $300. And, you know, I've seen some of them were 280, 275, and a couple were like 310, 320. But for the most part, over the five years, that debit spread is about $300 for one, one spread. And the interesting part here is that, uh, remember, you know, with the SSO example, we were putting $3,000 per trade. Well, in this example with the SPX debit spread, we're putting $300 per trade. So we're spending 10th of the amount less. Did I say that right? We're spending, you know, 10 times the money for SSO than we are with SPX. So this is a great, you know, uh, this is a great reason why people trade these things because it's less capital, especially if you have a small account. Um, most of you are going to be able to spend $300 a trade and but maybe not be, you know, willing to put $3,000 a trade or more. But with that $300 a trade, um, and averaging that debit spread over the five years, this strategy made $3,500, just over $3,500. Um, and again, the, the, the win rate was pretty close. It actually had a little bit better win rate. And that's because you have a sold strike option, um, in that trade. And there's, there was a couple examples where the market didn't do anything, but the strategy actually, you know, you got a little bit better win rate. Because even though the, it moved against you a little bit, you could still profit. So it's close enough. I mean, the the SSO, I think, was a 57% win rate. And the debit spread was a 60% win rate. So one or two more winners, uh, which probably means the losers were small on that. But anyway, just wanted to throw some context around that. Again, $300 per trade. It netted just over $3,500 in profits, trading one spread at a time. So from a from a capital efficiency standpoint, it really blew SSO 
uh, out of the water in terms of uh, profits and all that stuff. So, so just to repeat, uh, compare those SSO, we used 3000 per trade. We made about $2,900, but trading a single SPX debit spread, which is about $300 per trade, you actually made over $3,500 uh, using less capital. So, you know, the takeaway here is that debit spreads, and this is what they're meant to do, right? Debit spreads help reduce costs and increase profits compared to simply buying a stock or ETF. Doesn't mean you can't trade SSO. Um, if you can't trade options, for example, in a certain account or retirement account or something, maybe they, they don't let you do spread. You can still do an, a leveraged ETF. But I just wanted to put some, some, you know, a comparison here about debit spreads versus a leveraged ETF. Um, cause I know in the past, most of the books will talk about debit spreads and, or, or call options or whatever with just a, a regular stock, right? So the capital efficiency of the debit spread, there's definitely a benefit here. And I hope this study kind of highlighted that. There's a couple things that we did not discuss yet. And I think it's really important to, to point this out. So we've talked about raw dollar amounts, but we, we didn't talk about percentage terms. So for example, with a debit spread, a losing trade, if the market, you wake up the next day and the market tanks, that $300 can easily lose $150 or $200. So from a percentage standpoint, a loss on the debit spread will be a much higher percentage, like a 50% loss, 70% loss, but you're only putting out $300. So that's a bigger loss percentage-wise for that smaller amount of capital. So I wanted to kind of throw that out there. For SSO, the average loss percentage-wise was much less from a percentage standpoint with that $3,000 that we allocated. And the typically that loss I've seen is somewhere between 1% and 5%. So you're putting more money out, but the, the volatility, if you will, the drawdown, if you want to call it that, that's not the right word here, but you're not going to have a 50% loss, or at least in this uh, back this period, you're not going to have the same percentage loss as you would the debit spread. So even so, so you know the takeaway you are trading options it's, which is even more leverage. So you're risking more percentage wise but the capital that you're outlaying is much much less. So I think it's important to point that out but when you're comparing, you know, uh debit spread I mean we compared the profits but I wanted to just throw that out there when we're talking about the losses. So so real quick, if you like this episode, if you like this kind of studies and back tests it would really mean the world to me if you could leave a rating on iTunes or uh, even on Spotify and maybe share it with a trading buddy you know. That'll help spread the word. I'm trying to put out as much data as I can. And don't forget to check the description about the Pure Alpha strategy that this was applied to. And, you know, you don't need to trade the Pure Alpha strategy. That was just the 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 strategy I used for this test. If you have a trend following or whatever strategy and you already know your win rate and all these things, um, I think if you sort of factor in comparing debit spreads to that other, you know, maybe stock or option you're buying, I think it's something to maybe explore and you can kind of explore that on your own. But I will put a link in the description for the Pure Alpha strategy if you want to learn more about that strategy. So thanks for listening. I look forward to speaking to you on the next episode. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Stock Market Options Trading Podcast. To join our community of options traders, head on over to patreon.com forward slash vertical spread options trading for details. But before you go, you should know that everything discussed on this podcast and in this episode is for informational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice of any kind.